Okay, so let's start. Um, uh, so uh, last time we were uh, in the middle of the proof of Chinese remainder theorem, so there was only one step uh, remaining, which uh, which will uh, complete today. Yeah, so uh, so we saw um, there was a regular version, so the classical version of Chinese rem remainder theorem, which is for integers. And then uh, we, uh, and then this is the abstract version, which is on the screen now. And uh, we saw a proof of how the abstract version implies the regular, uh, the classical version. So there, uh, so if you put R to be Z and uh, these I's, I1 to IK to be ideal generated by the co prime number, pairwise co prime numbers N1 to NK, then you'll get the, uh, get this uh, classical version. So the abstract version of the theorem said that uh, let R be a commutative ring with unity and I1 to IK be pairwise co-maximal ideal, which means that I, I, IJ plus IJ prime is whole of R whenever uh, J is different from J prime. And then the, you know, one of the basic uh, conclusion is that the intersection of all these ideals is same as the product of these ideals. So this part we have already seen the proof. And uh, then the uh, remaining uh, the remaining part is uh, still to be done. So the ring the, the natural ring homomorphism which takes R to uh, its conjugacy classes in this uh, quotient ring. Um, uh, so it's sort of a diagonal kind of map. Uh, uh, this this map happens to be surjective, and the and the kernel is uh, intersection of all these ideals. So you will get that uh, R mod, the product of this ideal is, uh, is same as the, is equal to R mod, the intersection of these ideals because the product of the ideal is equal to the intersection. That's the first part. And they say these two, uh, this ring is isomorphic to R mod I1 uh, cross I'm R mod I2 up to R mod IK. So I think uh, yesterday when we were doing it, I had put N here so that I fixed as K. This should be K. Okay, so since I copied it from there, it, it has come out fat, but okay. So, so far we, uh, we saw this, uh, this result for K equals two Ks. So for two, when there are only two ideas, we, uh, we figured out that this is indeed the case. We have a surjection. And um, we also saw that uh, uh, the intersection of these, uh, these uh, rings is same as the product of these rings. And we saw the third crucial step we saw is that I1 is um, I1 and product of the other ideals I2 to IK are co-maximal. Yeah, and uh, the idea was we took uh, so let's just uh, recall so X1 um, we can always find uh, XJ in I1 and uh, YJ in IJ for J greater or equal to such that XJ plus yj is, is one, because i1 is co-maximal to ij, when j is bigger equal to, yeah, when j is bigger equal to. And then when you take the product of these terms, that uh, then you can find one element which is in uh, i2 to ik, the product of all yj's, and the other, uh, and the rest of the element will be in i1, the sum of the rest of the elements. Uh, so some of the rest of the terms will be in I1. So you can get one element in I1 and one element in the product, such that the, the sum is uh, one. Yeah, so that was the, I, uh, that was the crucial idea to prove that I1 and, and uh, product of I2 to IK are co-maximal. Okay, and uh, uh, so like this third step here, I can replace I1 by any, any number. Yeah, I can replace I1 by I2 or I3 or anything. It's just that the product will be similarly changed. Uh, so, so it's IJ uh, at one, uh, uh, on one hand and uh, the product of the remaining guys on the other. So if you do that, then you get so like three IJ and uh, product of IR, R equals one to K, R not equal to J. This, these are co-maximum. Yeah, so uh, same proof applies. 
So we have this. So using these two, we will uh, we will show that uh, there is a surjection from uh, this map phi is a surjective map. Yeah. So uh, so uh, last time, uh, as we argued, we only have to show that e1, e2, ej, eks are in the image. Yeah. So e1, e2, ek are those canonical elements in this, which are in the image. Yeah? So. Uh, to show phi is subjective enough to say uh, show ej where ej is this guy i one in the jth spot are in the image so this i maybe i uh, sort of went over a little fast so i'll i'll even show why it is enough to show ej are in the image of phi. okay so one, but uh, that i'll do in a bit but first let me try to show that ej are in uh, are indeed in the limit yeah now are uh, indeed in the image of phi so for uh, so for that uh, we'll use the fact that ij and uh, so we'll use this uh, this statement yeah ij and uh, this guy uh, so uh, in this statement okay so we'll use this statement so uh, from that statement we know that we can find an xj in ij and yj in this product of the other uh, ideals such that xj plus yj equals one yeah so so we want to find a, an element so remember k equals two case uh, we could find x x1 and x2 in, uh, x1 in i1 and x2 in i2 uh, such that their sum is one and that led us to give uh, this uh, 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 elements so x1 map to i2 and x2 map to I, e1 yeah, x, x1 map to e, e2 and x2 map to e1 that was the uh, uh, that was the trick for k equals 2 case so here we'll do similar thing yeah so here what will happen is yj will map to ej yeah so you look at the image of yj so what happens to yj phi of yj is uh, yj plus i1 up to yj plus ik uh, that is the definition yeah but uh, um, sir, uh, yeah? uh, can't we just directly compute from uh, strong induction on K? Like uh, we already know that I one and I two, I K are uh, co-maximal. Yeah. Then, if we do a strong induction on K, that is, if we assume that the uh, the subjectivity result is true for all K less than equal to J minus one. Yeah, yeah, sure. So you can use uh, you can use the induction uh, saying. Uh, um, R mod I I two to I K are uh, is isomorphic to um, R mod I two R mod I K and then, then use the K equals two case. Yeah, that is what you are saying. Yes. Yeah, you can do that. So I want to give you a, a little more explicit proof so that uh, there is nothing hidden. Yeah. So this is a somewhat of a fake induction in the sense that you don't really need induction. You can exactly say. Uh, why? Uh, uh, so it, it's it's explicit. There is no con con convoluted formulas and stuff. Okay. Yeah. So so then uh, phi of y j is uh, is going to be this guy, and then you can see that y j is uh, is going to be in i one. If j is uh, uh, if j is not equal to one, then uh, uh, then uh, uh, y j is in i one. So y j plus i one is i one, and so on. So only the jth term. So other than the jth term, um, the others uh, y j is in rest of the ideals except for i j. Yeah. So uh, except for uh, the jth term, all the other term is same as I one uh, is is uh, is just is the zero term uh, zero element of that quotient ring. Yeah. So you get I one, I uh, I two up to I j minus one. So maybe I should have put I j minus one for clarity. So let me just uh, so this I'll bring in a little later. So let me just put I j minus one here. Okay, and then j term it will be y j plus i j, and then again j plus one onwards is just the zero element of that quotient ring, which is uh, the zero el uh, zero element of that quotient ring. Uh, the equivalence class is denoted by the ideal itself. Yeah, I j. 
So, uh, so now we'll write it as zero. Yeah. So this is zero, zero. And why is yj plus ij zero? Because you can uh, yj uh, because xj xj is in ij. So yj plus ij is also same as xj plus yj plus ij. Yeah. Because you can add any element of ij, and the equivalence class doesn't change. Right? But xj plus yj is one. Yeah. So this is same as one plus yj which is one bar. So if you like, I'll put a bar here. So this is how you, we get EJ. Okay. Um, so, uh, so we saw that y, uh, uh, phi of YJ is indeed EJ. Okay. Then uh, now I uh, we want to argue that once, so if you are convinced that uh, showing EJs are in the image, then then we are done right but i'm just trying to justify why uh, showing ejs are in the images enough okay so, uh, in the in the remaining part so so take any uh, so we want to show that phi is surjective so take any element in uh, in this uh, product ring a1 to a, a1 bar to ak bar so i'm now using bar notation because this i am um, ideal notation so one can also write it as a1 plus uh, i1 up to ak plus ik if you like yeah. so this or the other way mm. okay then uh, uh, the claim is that uh, so, so where ai is are elements of the ring r so a1 bar means it's uh, it's the class containing uh, a1 so now you consider the element uh, summation aj yj and uh, the claim is phi of that is going to be our, our guy a1 bar to ak bar. So what is phi of this? So phi of this is uh, phi of aj times phi of yj by, uh, and sum because phi is a ring homomorphism. Yeah. So we have already uh, de uh, defined phi. Phi is a ring homomorphism. And since it's a ring homomorphism, we have this property. And uh, I don't know why this became r instead of r, whatever. Funny little things. Yeah. So, uh, what is phi of AJ? It's uh, AJ bars. Yeah. So, it's actually AJ plus I1. Uh, the second term is AJ plus I2. So, this, uh, so th this is why it's useful. Uh, sometimes it's useful to uh, write it in this notation, uh, ideal notation. But from context, you can understand this AJ plus I, uh, I1, AJ plus I2, and so on, AJ plus IK. And what is phi of yj? Phi of yj is ej. Yeah, that is what uh, we we concluded from here. Yeah. So, from from start. Okay. So this is uh, this is where uh, we uh, we use our from start. Yeah. Okay, and uh, but ej everything is zero except the jth spot. So what you'll get if you multiply these two is uh, remember the multiplication in this product is component wise. So all will be zero except the jth spot, and at the jth stop, the spot you'll get aj bar, which is same as aj plus ij, capital I. Yeah, which is uh, so now if you sum all them, all of them you'll get in a1 bar to aj bar. Yeah. So you saw. Uh, so we found a pre-image of uh, of the uh, of uh, this guy, which is summation a j y j, j equals one. And uh, so now we want. Uh, so this proves the surjectivity of phi. Now um, we want to show that the kernel of phi is the intersection. So this is, uh, of course, whatever lies in the kernel. Is going is in the uh, is uh, sorry whatever lies in the intersection is in the kernel. Uh, are actually both the steps are, uh, are uh, both the directions are equally easy. So x belongs to kernel phi if and only if x plus i j is equal to i j for all j. Yeah, because x belongs to kernel phi means x plus i j. So the image of uh, uh, so image of kernel phi is x plus i1 cross uh, comma x plus i2 cross uh, uh, comma x plus i uh, 
i k yeah dot 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 x x plus i k this is yeah here um no so here is the definition r, r goes to r plus i1 to r, r plus i n yeah so so all of them must be zero so x plus i j must be equal to i j and uh, and the reverse direction is also true so this is equivalent which is equivalent to saying that x belongs to i j which is equivalent to saying that x the intersection of all these ideas okay so that tells you that the kernel is this and that's it now now uh, no. okay there is first now use first isomorphism theorem theorem to so conclude r mod i1 to ik is isomorphic to r mod i1 r mod ik okay r mod the uh, uh, the kernel of e is isomorphic to the uh, the h the codomain any questions okay so this is uh, this completes the proof of uh, chinese remainder theorem uh, and that's all we i wanted to say about the chinese remainder theorem okay so let's uh, are there any questions okay so there are no questions let's uh, get to the second part which is it, you know, so now we'll talk about euclidean domain okay so uh, so this these are some nicer uh, uh, nicer rings better than integral domain uh, so euclidean domain is not the main objective of this study the main is uh, so we'll also study what is called principal ideal domain and unique factorization domain so so principal ideal domain are uh, are uh, are uh, special are uh, um are also integral domains uh, and euclidean domain are sort of examples of principal ideal domain and uh, so principal ideal domain are more prevalent than euclidean domain so there are examples of uh, of uh, principal ideal domains which are not euclidean domain but uh, uh, but uh, i mean it's easy to verify something is a principal ideal domain than a euclidean domain but somehow sometimes it's uh, uh, one of the easiest way to check something is a principal ideal domain is also to uh, give a uh, norm or something okay so so that's why we want to study euclidean domain briefly and then now we will study unique factorization domain which are uh, which are uh, more general than principal ideal domain uh, and they are much more prevalent yeah so um, so principal uh, so uh, there is a uh, there's a big difference uh, between principal ideal domain and unique factorization domain so principal ideal domain are very special class of uh, uh, unique factorization domain so in principal ideal domain every non zero prime ideal is maximal sum but that, uh, in ufd that doesn't happen okay. so there is some dimension kind of issue so principal time uh, uh, and principal ideal domain you can think of it as r1 if you are thinking of uh, uh, thinking of analysis yeah and a uh, unique factor in a factorization domain is like r n yeah so arbitrary dimensional space kind of thing so that is the kind of distinction that I have. okay so euclidean domain what is a uh, euclidean domain a euclidean domain is an integral domain r such that there exists a function n from r cross to z satisfying the following condition uh, um, for a b in r there exists q r q and r in r such that a is b q plus r with n r less than n b or r equals zero so uh, so this euclid uh, this uh, this function which is also called um, norm or uh, euclidean function so this is uh, this is a function so, uh, which will allow one to do division algorithm yeah so 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 you want some uh, some function like this so euclidean domain is a ring which uh, for which such a function exists but this function is not part of the data okay 
So the uh, uh, particular Euclidean domain ha may have uh, um, many such functions. Uh, 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 just one. So uh, so uh, um, so we don't really care about the function that much as long as there exists su such a function. Yeah. So the the, uh, um, the ring is what we care about, and existence of such a function is all we care about. The ex explicit function we don't really care about. Uh, when we call something uh, empty uh, Euclidean though. Uh, so why it is there exists QNR? Say that again. Uh, why does there exist QNR? Like for every QNR, uh, our NR should be less than NB or like what should? So for, for so mm, this is a property of N. So you want N, a function from R cross. Uh, yeah, this I didn't say what it is. R cross means R minus zero. Okay. So, and so you want a function n uh, from uh, non-zero elements of R to uh, to positive integers, now non-negative integers, which will satisfy this condition that given any two. So, if someone gives you any two elements, then you can find q and r such that a you can write it as b q plus r, where where n r is less than n b. Yeah, so this 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 is a condition on on n. So n should satisfy such condition. Okay. So uh, so we we I'll show you in this example. Yeah. So for instance, uh, uh, if if your ring R uh, is Z, then Z is a Euclidean domain, and for that we can take n to be um, a going to absolute value of a. Okay. So then, well, uh, then this is just division algorithm. So division algorithm uh, gives us this, right? Because uh, given two integers a and um, two non-zero integers a and b, yeah, um, we can find uh, q and r, right? So uh, so we can divide a by b, and we will get some uh, some quotient and some remainder. Yeah, b times q plus some remainder r. So, so we can make sure that R is between zero and so by remainder's theorem. Theorem. Uh, we, uh, there exists Q and R, both greater or equal zero. Uh, so R greater or equal zero, Q need not be um, Q in Z such that A equals B, so maybe I'll, I'll rewrite this here, sorry. Um, so it's just uh, Q um, in Z and uh, R between zero and uh, B, yeah? Uh, absolute value of B. So B may be negative, that's why I have to put absolute value of B. Uh, such that this happens. So this we can always do, right? Yeah, uh, this is the remainder's theorem I'm talking about. So uh, so so what we get is that uh, uh, this we can do. So th uh, so that uh, that, uh, that tells us that uh, this norm. If I take um, this as the function, uh, so maybe I should have. Um, but anyway, so so that tells you that norm of uh, R is going to be uh, to be so if r is not equal to zero then norm of r is just absolute value of r is less than absolute value of b which is same as norm of b okay so uh, so this uh, this function a going to absolute value of a is indeed uh, indeed a norm which satisfies this condition make sense uh, so someone had asked this question, so that's why I'm trying to wait for a response. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine now. Okay, good. Okay. So, uh, so, so, uh, so that is the kind of function we are looking at. Very, very minimal kind of restriction, but uh, we need something so that we can carry out division algorithm. Yeah. So that, so we need some fun some function which will allow us to do division algorithm. Okay. So similarly, um, so so that tells you that Z is a Euclidean domain because we illustrated this function. Yeah. Similarly, one can show that Qx or Kx 
q is rational k is any field so polynomial ring in one variable is is indeed a euclidean domain okay so uh, so one has to give a function again yeah uh, from uh, uh, non zero polynomials to z so what will be this function the degree the degree yeah so we rem remember what is the uh, division algorithm in polynomials so uh, you can if you divide you, you uh, the degree of the remainder is less than the de degree of the divisor yeah that is what you get so degree is that function yeah so f going to degree f so uh, so in the in the polynomial case remainder's theorem says that given fx dx in kx uh, by division algorithm uh, uh, there exists qx plus rx uh, qx and rx such that fx is qx times dx plus rx uh, where uh, so maybe i should say where too many such that is a bit confusing yeah where degree of rx is less than degree of gx or rx is zero so if uh, if uh, fx divides uh, uh, sorry if gx divides fx then rx will be zero there won't be any remainder or degree of rx is less than degree of gx okay so uh, so this theorem implies so this implies that n is uh, um and is uh, uh euclidean now maybe i should call this in a euclidean norm in the definition as well and kx is a euclidean domain so i'll abbreviate ed okay so maybe um, let's make this a little fatter so this is uh, abbreviated as ed and uh, n will be called n will be called euclidean euclidean now so the point is we are not going to use uh, this uh, we will not uh, study euclidean norms much but um, just include uh, but um, but anyway we'll use it a little bit so we should know what it means yeah but uh, euclidean domain is important uh, hmm. do we need field here or integral domain will do no you need field yeah so any integral domain won't do will be called euclidean domain euclidean norm Uh, so uh, so in particular uh, a polynomial ring over, over any integral domain is uh, is not a, not a, a euclidean domain okay so even polynomial ring over uh, over something as nice as a uh, as z so zx is also not a in euclidean domain so we'll see uh, why this is uh, later on in the course uh, probably uh, hopefully this week itself okay okay so and the third example is valuation rings okay so valuation rings with uh, valuation so you have this valuation function yeah so you can show that valuation uh, valuation ring with valuation function as uh, euclidean norm so this uh, will be homework so valuation rings are also euclidean domains okay any questions so these are examples of uh, uh, euclidean domain and uh, uh, so uh, so the next class of rings uh, which we will study is so so we we saw many examples yeah so next class of uh, rings which we will study is principal ideal domain so they are uh, 
they are slightly general than Euclidean domain, but uh, yeah, not by much. But uh, this is this is the main. Uh, 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 so the reason to uh, study Euclidean domain is to give some examples of PIGs. Yeah? So what is a principal ideal domain? So an integral domain R is called PID if every R ideal is principal. So a ring in which every, uh, our integral domain in which every um, ideal is principal, which uh, by the way, principal means that uh, the ideal is generated by one element. Yeah, so an integral domain R is called PID if every idea uh, if every ideal is generated by one element. Yeah. So uh, so before I uh, before we go uh, further, we uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, it looks like I haven't included any example. Yeah, somehow the examples are missing. So uh, so let me just uh, include examples here. So. Um, so what are some examples of PID? So of course fields are, right? There are only two ideals in fields, the whole ring and uh, the zero ideal. And of course both are the, both the ideals are principal. One is generated by zero and the other one is generated by any unit or one, yeah? So fields are example. Integers we know are example of Euclidean uh, of uh, PID because we know so we saw um, so we haven't seen this so we will see that integers are examples and we'll also see that QX is an example of a or for that matter KX is an example of a of a of a PID. In fact, what we'll show is that Euclidean domains are PIDs. So all these um, exam, uh, all these are examples. Z, UX, KX, valuation rings, they are all examples of uh, PID. Okay. So, uh, but uh, we'll start by studying uh, uh, some, uh, some characteristic of PIDs and then we'll get to uh, examples, okay? So let R be a integral domain. An element X in R is called uh, irreducible if x is um, non-zero, non-unit, and uh, if uh, so, so uh, and if you can write it as a product of two elements in R, then um, then one of them must be a unit. Okay. So that means you can't decompose it further as product of two uh, two elements in some non-trivial way. So uh, of course, any element you can write it as uh, some unit times inverse of that unit times that element itself. So that uh, you can do, but other than that, you can't do anything else. So then you say that X is irreducible. So first, uh, first hypothesis is it should be a non non unit element, non zero and non unit, and the second thing should be that you can't decompose it further uh, as product of two. Uh, you can't decompose it non uh, decompose it non trivially as product of two elements. That's why it's called irreducible. Yeah, so that maybe explains the term. So uh, maybe I should write it here for yeah. Okay. If this happens. And similarly, uh, and then uh, another uh, important aspect of uh, in, uh, important definition is that an element X in R is called a prime element if whenever X divides AV, X divides A, or X divides for AB in R. Yeah. So this is parallel to prime numbers in integers. This definition. Yeah. So of course, uh, it's motivated by prime numbers in integers. So of course, prime numbers are prime elements of integers yeah, by definition. So prime numbers are, uh, so, uh, and um, it's also related to the prime ideals. So the first observation is that X is prime if and only if X is a prime ideal. Okay. So, so this is um, more or less to tautological statement. X is prime if and only if uh, the ideal generated by X is a prime. 
and then we will see some relation between uh, irreducibles and primes. Okay. So we will show that every prime element is irreducible. And uh, if we assume some things about the ring, then the converse also holds. So every irreducible is prime. So for instance, in let's look at look at integers. So we saw that every prime element is a, is a uh, every prime number is a prime element uh, by definition of uh, prime. Right? P divides a b uh, a product of two integers, then p divides one of them at least one. Of them. But uh, another definition of prime uh, numbers or another equivalent property of prime numbers in integers is that you can't write it as product of two. Uh, uh, so the only way you can write p as product of two uh, uh, positive integers is one and uh, one times p. Yeah. There is no other prime and there is no other factorization, which is same as saying that p is irreducible. Yeah. So prime number. Uh, so in integers. The irreducibles are same as prime elements, and they happen. Um, they happen to be the prime numbers. Yeah. So in integers, they they are the same notion, but in some other rings, they may not be. Yeah. So we'll come to it. But let's uh, let's see uh, this first property, which I said is tautological. X is prime if and only if uh, the ideal generated by X is a prime ideal. Yeah. So consider the ideal generated by X. Um, so if X is uh, X is a prime element, uh, so so this this is not going to be yeah. So I so I've written two lines. So I guess uh, X is uh, X is not equal to the ideal generated by X is not equal to R if and only if X is a non-unit. Yeah, and A B belongs to X if and only if X divides A B. So these are the first two observations. And then uh, um, you just uh, make this uh, equivalence. Yeah. So x is prime if and only if x is a non-unit. So by definition, x is prime if and only if x is a non-unit. And x divides a b implies x divides a or x divides b for all a b in R. Yeah. So that is the definition of prime element. And uh, what is this equivalent to? X is a non-unit is equivalent to the ideal generated by x is not equal to R. And uh, X divides AB is same as saying AB belongs to X, and X divides A is same as saying A belongs to X. Uh, so what we get is the second condition is same as saying AB belongs to X implies A belongs to the ideal generated by X, or B belongs to ideal generated by X for all AB. Yeah, and uh, this uh, this statement is same as uh, the this statement is same as saying that this is a prime ideal. So remember, prime ideal is a proper ideal, which means the in, in this is not holding such that uh, this property holds. A B belongs to P implies A belongs to P or B belongs to P for all A B in R. Okay. So so I hope uh, this this does look like a tautology to everyone that X is a prime element if and only if the ideal generated by X is a prime ideal. Okay, so it's just trying to understand what uh, x divides a is same as saying um, uh, is same as saying that a belongs to the ideal generated by x. Uh, that is pretty much what it is. Okay. So now, uh, uh, as telling you that prime elements are always irreducible. So if R is an integral domain. Uh, and x belongs to R be a prime element, then x is always irreducible. But the converse is not always true, but uh, we'll see that it is true for PIDs. But let's, uh, let's see this direction first. A prime element is always an irreducible element. So we want to show that x is, so we are given x is prime, we want to show that x is irreducible, yeah? So x equals uh, y times z for some y and z in R. So this implies, uh, so in particular, we can say that x, x of course divides itself. So it will divide y, z, yeah? So we want to use that x is a prime. So this tells us that x divides y or x divides z. X of course is a non-zero non-unit because that's common for both prime and zero decibels. So that part we don't have to check. We only have to check uh, and that we can't decompose it in a non-trivial way. So suppose we decompose it like this, y times z, we want to show either y is a unit or z is a unit. 
<laughs> so we get that x device y or x device c. What does that mean? x device y means we can write uh, y, uh, y as x times something. Uh, and so, or similarly, we can write, so if x device y, then there exists a in us such that y is a times x. And uh, in that case, we'll get that um, we again use this identity back again. Yeah, so we use this identity to say x is equal to a times x times z. Yeah, replace y by a times x. And then uh, remember x is non-zero. Yeah, and we are in an integral domain. So we can cancel it out. Um, so since x is non-zero and r integral domain. So, so the cancellation works. So we get that one is same as a times z, which tells us that z is a unit. Similarly, if x divides z, then we will get the other term, y is going to be a unit. Yeah. So that's it. That's the definition of easier disorder. If you write x equals y times z, then you have to show either y is a unit or z is a unit. Assuming x is non-zero. Any questions so far? Okay, there are some questions in the chat. So I didn't understand this question. Rashmi, can you can you repeat this question? Sir, in the hello, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, in the Euclidean domains definition. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, there a, for in the part that you've uh, boxed with the red marker for a comma b belongs to R. Mm -hmm. uh, R cross. Yeah, yeah. That is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. That is it. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There should be a cross so for non zero element so b should certainly be in r cross a a could be in a doesn't matter but b has to be in r cross yeah but anyway you if you check a for a b non zero this is good enough okay. so that was it that was the thing okay okay thanks so this is a correction any other question ah, okay so maybe we'll take a, take a five minutes break. So we'll, uh, we'll reconvene at 12 and uh, continue from there. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, I had a question which is not uh, exactly related to the class uh, right now. Mm -hmm. uh, can I uh, ask the question to you after the class? You can ask me now. Okay, sir. Sir, it's actually, uh, I just was uh, trying a few uh, problems from the book. Uh, I uh, sort of encountered a different type of situation than algebraic structure. Not exactly a ring, but somewhat like the whole number. Okay, monoid. They have a structure similar to the whole numbers. Okay, so you can add and multiply, but yes, not sir. subtract. Yes, sir. So okay. is there a specific name to this structure? Um, so, like, we can uh, we can derive a few interesting properties from these itself. Yeah. So th there is something called monoids, which uh, but that don't have product structure. So that's just uh, uh, without inverses on product without inverses. The monoid. Uh, in the yeah. Yeah. So there is some categorical notion. Uh, something called tensor category, which uh, which has. Uh, sums and products, uh, but uh, not necessarily uh, uh, negatives, okay. So, but uh, that's used for some other things, but um, yeah, so I don't know. Um, um, yeah, so there are not many, uh, uh, many objects which are studied. So those are studied, uh, used for different uh, kind of thing, yeah. But there is something called, uh, Tensor category, which you can look at. So even uh, if uh, the tensor also behaves like that. Say that again. Uh, like direct sums. Yeah. So direct sums are like sums. 
is R and uh, tensor products are like products. Yeah, so the same we gave you over there as well. Yeah, but uh, there is no negative as such. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sir. thank you, sir. You're welcome. Any other question? Okay, so let's uh, let's reconvene at uh, maybe now at twelve two. Okay. Um. So where were we? Ah, so we were in this. Uh, ah, sorry, so I should have moved this here. So we already saw this PID, and uh, we saw that uh, primes are irreducible. Okay, so we saw the proof of primes are irreducible. Yeah. So now, um, uh, now some example. So I guess uh, examples are here. So uh, can everyone hear me? Yeah, I hope so. And I did resume recording. Okay. Yeah. So in Z, the prime elements are precisely the prime numbers which we argued. Also, uh, in integers, we saw that irreducibles are same as primes. In uh, in rash in in field, there are no irreducible or prime, right? Because uh, if you take any non-zero no, uh, element, then it becomes unit. Yeah. So fields are uh, the fields don't contain any prime or irreducible. Element. Now the third is uh, polynomial ring in uh, in one variable over a field. Yeah. So in kx, where k is a field. A polynomial is irreducible if it is an irreducible. So this maybe you can think of it as a definition, a, a definition of an irreducible polynomial. Yeah. So a polynomial is said to be irreducible if uh, if it is an irreducible element of kx. So that means you can't write it as product of two irreducible. Uh, two non-zero uh, um, non-constant uh, polynomials. Yeah. So remember, all the all the constant non-zero constant is a is a unit in k in, in kx, and that's it. Those are the only units in kx. Yeah. So another way to think about irreducible polynomial is you can't write it as product of two non-constant polynomials. Okay, which is same as uh, saying that it is a it is an irreducible element of k. So that's uh, so that is the uh, reason uh, that is the motivation for the uh, term irreducible, uh, and uh, that is the reason such elements are called irreducible. I mean, people were studying irreducible polynomials uh, earlier, but uh, in abstract setup. Why call such an element irreducible because of, of this property, and why call prime elements as prime is uh, borrowed from integers. So, uh, so we we already saw that every prime element is irreducible, and in integers we saw that uh, primes and irreducibles are same. So similarly in kx. We, we we already know that every prime element is going to be irreducible, but in fact the other way is also true. All irreducible polynomials are prime elements, okay. and uh, uh, so in so the, in particular in Kx also the set of prime elements and the set of irreducible elements are the same. So in fact we will uh, we will see uh, the following uh, general statement. So if R is a principal ideal domain, then uh, then then every irreducible element of R is a prime element. So in fact, in a PID, irreducibles and prime elements are same. Okay. So uh, so other direction is uh, is true for any integral domain, but for PID. Every irreducible element is a prime element. So let's see a proof. 
So, uh, so remember, PID is a, a integral domain in which every ideal is principal. So that is what we'll use. Okay. So, uh, so in particular, it will be true for Euclidean domains as well. Um, oh, that part we haven't shown yet. Uh, so maybe we'll do that after this. Okay. So we'll show Euclidean domains are PIDs. So let A belongs to R be an irreducible element. So first we are showing that every irreducible element in a PID is a prime element. So let A be an irreducible element. We want to show that uh, uh, A is a prime element. Yeah. But remember prime element is same as saying that uh, the ideal generated by A is prime. So that is what we'll do. We'll show that the ideal generated by A is prime. So the uh, yes, so I remember that was the tautology which we which we have here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, let uh, uh, let uh, so first observation is that uh, this is a proper R ideal because uh, it's an irreducible element, so it can't be a unit. Yeah. So this is a proper R ideal. And uh, so to say that it's, a, it's, so we want to show that it's a, it's a, it's a prime, uh, uh, prime ideal. Yeah, so what we will show is that it's a maximal ideal. And we know that maximal ideals are prime ideals. Okay. So, uh, so let M be a, uh, so since it's a proper ideal, we know that it is contained in some maximal ideal. Yeah, so let M contain uh, M be a maximal ideal of R containing it. Yeah, so this is what we saw earlier, right? Um, in last class or the class previous to that. So if I is a uh, proper ideal of R, then we can find uh, 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 find a maximal ideal in R containing I. So that's what we are using. Since R is a PID. We know that uh, this maximal ideal M is also generated by one element, uh, which is, uh, let's say, generated by B for some B. Yeah? So this is where we are using the fact that uh, maximal ideal is generated by one element. And uh, of course, it contains A. Yeah? So and, uh, a, and it contains the whole ideal A. So in particular, it contains A. So uh, what we get is we can write A as B times C for some C in R. Yeah. So if A belongs to the ideal generated by B, that means B divides A, uh, which is same as saying that A is equal to B times C. Okay. But A is uh, given to be irreducible, right? So that is the hypothesis. A is given to be irreducible. So if A is irreducible, then uh, of course, and B is. Uh, B is not a unit, right? Because the ideal generated by B is the uh, maximal ideal, which is a proper R ideal. So B is not a unit that tells you that C must be a unit. Yeah. Since A is irreducible, you can't have two, uh, it, you can't write it as product of two uh, non-zero non-unit guys. So product of non-units you can't write. So B, uh, C must be a unit. So if C is a unit, then, uh, well, B, you can write it as AC inverse, yeah? So if C is a unit, then the ideal generated by M uh, by A is equal to the ideal generated by B. So maybe here, maybe I should provide some more justification. So this is clear, but uh, maybe I'll just say uh, why. So, um, so maybe, uh, where should I write it? C is a unit tells us that uh, B is equal to C inverse A, which implies B, uh, B you can write it as, uh, uh, something, as uh, something times A. So that tells you that B is contained in the ideal generated by A and hence uh, these three ideals are same. Okay, so, so that tells you that A is a maximal ideal and hence a prime ideal. So this implies A is a prime ideal. Yeah. Prime ideals are seen as, uh, so if ideal generated by A is prime, then it must be a prime. 
Any questions? Okay. Okay, so if there are no questions, uh, let, let's, uh, so I, the next thing I had promised was uh, this theorem that, uh, uh, sir, yeah. Uh, from here only we can conclude, right, that any prime ideal here should be maximal ideal. Because uh, the ideal generated by irreducible element is always maximal ideal, we proved here. And now in, in a PID, in a, yeah, PID. In a PID, yeah. yeah, so in a PID, so uh, yeah, so maybe I can add this as a corollary. So corollary in a PID, a corollary, maybe it's a corollary of the proof, of the proof, let's see. Yeah, because uh, it's not clear what, uh, in a PID, uh, every non-zero prime ideal, is maximum. Yeah. So, uh, so more or less, uh, so sort of, uh, if you take a non-zero prime ideal, uh, it will be contained in some maximal ideal, and uh, then you can follow the same argument, and so that it has to be the equal to that maximum. Okay. So, uh, so in a PID, every non-zero prime ideal is maximal. Okay, and then uh, the theorem I was talking about, any other question or comments? Okay. So um, uh, the theorem I was talking about was uh, this, every Euclidean domain, Sorry. Domain is a principal ideal domain. Is a principal ideal domain. Okay, so so the proof is just using the using the division algorithm uh, or using the norm. Yeah. So let R be a Euclidean domain and. Uh, so Euclidean, uh, so since R is a Euclidean domain, it has uh, this Euclidean norm. It may have many, but we just fix one. So, and let N from R cross to Z greater or equal zero be a Euclidean norm. So, we gather our hypothesis. Now we'll get to the conclusion. Yeah. So now we take some some ideal in R, and we want to prove that it is uh, it is uh, principal. Yeah. So let I contained in R be a non-zero ideal. I mean, zero ideal is uh, is principal, right? It contains only one element, so of course it's generated by one element. Yeah? So we take uh, some non-zero ideal. And um, so we want to uh, show that um, it is principal. Yeah, so it's generated by one element. So, uh, so, uh, so how will we figure out which element we should take? The one with the least norm. Yeah, so uh, we use the norm function and take the uh, element with the least norm, yeah? So let A in I be, so, uh, so, uh, so uh, norm is going to be greater or equal one, yeah, and it's integer. So the, let A, be, A in I be such, uh, such that it has the least norm. Why can the norm be zero? Norm can be zero, it's okay. I mean, uh, for instance, uh, the degree function in uh, uh, on uh, the polynomial ring, yeah? 
this constant will have a norm zero. Just that the zero element of the ring, we don't want to give norm. Uh, I mean, you can say that even that has norm zero. So some people take that convention. But anyway, it's somewhat uh, a matter of convention. Yeah, so but valuation. Yeah. A norm zero element can also have zero norm. Norm, no. and yeah, yeah, of course. For instance, uh, for instance, const, uh, non -cons, uh, constants in uh, non zero constants in field in a polynomial ring over a field. Yeah, so this example, let's get back to this example. Where is this polynomial ring? Yeah. Um, yeah. So here the norm is the degree of F. Yeah. So if you take uh, uh, the polynomial, you know, the constant polynomial two, then its degree is zero. Yeah, so non-zero element has norm zero. Zero element, we don't give any, any norm. Yeah, so norm is not defined on the zero element. So norm could be zero, yeah? That's okay. Okay, so. Okay. Where are we? Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, so we take a, uh, a b such a, uh, a b an element of i such that n a is minimum is uh, is is the smallest. Yeah. Is the least. So there may be many such a, yeah. So we, are, I'm not saying that a, there is a unique a with uh, a minimum, but there will be one a for which it's the minimum, yeah. Because uh, uh, in over non-negative integers, you can always find one guy with the smallest norm. Okay. So uh, the claim is that the ideal generated by a is is i. Okay. And uh, that will complete the proof that uh, so that will show that I is uh, I, uh, I is uh, you know, that will show that R is a PID because I was some arbitrary ideal, arbitrary non zero ideal, but zero ideal we already know. Yeah, so of course, A is contained in I. Yeah, the ideal generated by this is of because uh, because A is an element of I, so any multiple of A is already there. So we only have to show the other inclusion. So let uh, B be some element of I. Yeah. Then we want to show that uh, uh, B belongs to uh, the ideal generated by A. So then we use this uh, property division uh, algorithm using this norm. Yeah. So um, um, by axiom of Euclidean norm, if you like. No, there exist uh, Q and R in uh, capital R such that, uh, yeah, so uh, somehow the rows are reversed, but uh, B is equal to Q times A plus R. Yeah, I'll, there in the axiom with A equals BQ plus R, but it's okay, it doesn't matter, yeah. with. Uh, either r equals zero or norm of uh, r is strictly less than norm of a, yeah? So this is what the axiom tells, uh, uh, and this is what uh, uh, n being Euclidean norm tells us, yeah? But of course, this, this is not possible, yeah? Not possible because uh, why is that? Because uh, the point is uh, R, uh, since, since R is equal to B minus QA, and uh, remember B is in I and uh, A is in I. Yeah, A, A, so B minus QA is in I, right? 
So, uh, and A has the least, A is an element of I with the least norm. So you can't find any element in I, other element in I, which will have norm smaller than, smaller than hence, um, a norm of A. And so this implies norm of R has to be greater than, equal to norm of A. It can't be strictly smaller than norm of A. Yeah, so that tells you that, uh, hence, this implies B is equal to QA. So that tells you, so the only possibility is R is zero, which implies B belongs to the ideal generated by A. Yeah, hence, claim, and, and, and hence, the ideal. in R is principle. That completes the proof. Okay. Uh, any any questions? Uh, yeah, I can't somehow I can't make this smaller so that you could see the whole thing at one go. But maybe when you sort of download the notes, you will be able to see. Any questions? Uh, sir, is there any example of a PID that is not an ED? Yeah, so there is one example. So I'll maybe I'll talk about it. Uh, so it's a, it's a not an easy example to write it down, but I'll I'll talk about it maybe in the next class. Of an example which is a PID but not an ED. Any any other question? Okay, so so if there are no questions, uh, maybe maybe it's time to stop the class. So I'll see you guys uh, on uh, on Thursday. I'll I'll have a new set of homework um, assigned uh, today or by tomorrow. So most likely today. Uh, whose due date, due date will be next week? Okay, and if you have any questions about the about the uh, homework, the grading, etc., I'll I'll ask you to talk to the grader. She uh, you can write to her, and uh, she should uh, respond. But give her some time. Yeah, and um, if you have some questions about the correctness, uh, then you uh, and uh, and uh, you can't settle the dispute between you and the grader. Then only you sort of approach me. But if you have questions about why you got uh, you you think you should uh, she should have been more lenient in uh, points and stuff, that I'll uh, I'll I'll not interfere because she may have. Uh, Give, uh, deducted the same points for every same number of points for everyone. So it's a bit unfair for her to recheck everyone and uh, do as well. And it's anyway subjective, yeah. So don't worry too much about. Uh, remember that uh, each of these homework will, uh, I mean, its share in the final is only going to be about four percent, less than five percent for sure, and probably less than four percent. So even out of hundred, if you uh, if you if you uh, if you are worried about losing 10, it's, it's like point, uh, point 0.4, yeah? So don't worry about it. Any other questions? Okay, okay, then let's, uh, let's call it a day. Bye-bye. Uh,